to Gila Nehemia, Sacred Erotic Poetry, Sacred Ascension, and Sacred Sexuality podcast. I'm so glad you're here. Um, thank you, thank you. Those of you who've been listening uh, uh, regularly and those of you who are new, thank you for being here today. Uh, before I get into introductions, I'd love to just um, ground us all into our heart space. So if you'd like to close your eyes with me, we're going to take three deep breaths together. We're calling in our guides, our angels, God Source Universe, our power animals, Mother Gaia, Father Sky, um, our spirit team to assist us in this transmission to connect our heart spaces, to allow any answers that we need to hear to come through and to open up to any questions that need, um, that need to be asked to come up as well. So um, just um, inviting you to feel into your heart space. You may want to just um, with your hands, just feel your heart and just like massage your heart to really uh, kind of open up any kind of tension that might be there at this time or any other part of your body, your shoulders, just to kind of give yourself that uh, bit of love to begin as you listen to this podcast and really connect into yourself. Aho, uh, and so it is. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Gila Nehemia. I am a sacred erotic a uh, self-love mentor, a spiritual heart guide, divine feminine healer, writing empowerment coach. I really um, assist others who have primarily women who have been, who have experienced chronic trauma, um, specifically domestic violence, sexual abuse, child abuse, and are um, now looking to heal those spaces and places to have this divine relationship with God and with another from their heart space. I work with sacred sexuality to open up erotic desires and really connect into all of the chakras to open them up into our divine missions um, <clears throat> and speaking our truth. So I'm really happy to be here today. I Those of you who have been following me last week, I was away and it was just lots of things were happening. So everything was on hiatus for like a week and a half. And then I came back. I was in um, vacation in Tel Aviv just for a few days, like a mini vacation. And um, then there was a holiday, Rosh Hashanah. So um, it was just kind of busy. I had people over. It was really, really fun. And um, I enjoyed uh, the ringing in of the new year. So today begins, um, you know, the balance. And that's what I want to talk about since it was the new moon on the 6th and 7th. Uh, today is the 8th of September. So you may be feeling these new moon energies. You might be feeling cycles, super closing, like very challenging situations in your life. Um, you might be dealing with them. I know that many people that I know have been um, been in very difficult challenges, and uh, myself included, really just closing out uh, challenging situ relationships um, and really stepping into the truth of who I am. And really the topic today is about inner union, the union of your own energies as well as the union with God. Um, so I just wanted to take a few minutes today to discuss that with you and maybe pose some questions that may help you to connect to that. Because sometimes we're really connected into ourselves. I actually have started this book um, by Ramana Maharishi. Um, he is a sage from India. Um, he actually lived in the, uh, the regional state that my parents are from. Um, in India, and uh, he's a very well-known sage, and so like at a very young age, he realized that he was not of this, you know, connected to the real, you know, real, um, <clears throat> how do I say, like the societal obligations of this world, let's put it that way, and I think he was still in school when he realized this, and he actually left his family, and like in, in the ways of, of Indian um, spiritual awakening, he decided to become like a sannyasi, you know, to like leave all material, um, material world 
obligations to come into this spiritual uh, kind of connection. And, you know, I just started this book, but part of what he says, um, or he recounts, or the author recounts, it wasn't actually written by him, but it's actually about him, um, <clears throat> talks about how he just, like, everything was so um, synchronous, you know, like he didn't have enough money, but, you know, like he knew exactly how much he needed uh, without actually looking at the timetable or he looked at it and, you know, like it was just like everything was given to him along the way and it was just all this fortuitous uh, path. And I feel like that's where we're all at as well. Those of us who are on this path, who are manifesting quickly, who are beginning to realize that we can have whatever we desire as we connect into that infinite oneness, as we connect into the safety of ourselves and of God, you know, then we are allowing ourselves to actually have what we desire. And I know I may have said this before, but I feel like this particular moon is asking us to be in this balance, you know, really kind of ground that balance into our realities, you know, that, that masculine energy and that feminine energy or whatever you want to call it, that like safety energy and that loving energy, whatever terms really make sense to you is that, um, you know, we, when we can believe that nobody can take our desires away from us, no, nothing, even if we don't get exactly what we want, um, everything is working out for us. Um, you know, I know that there's this idea and I used to have it all the time of disappointment. Oh my God, it didn't happen the way I wanted it to, you know, what, a, oh no, like I am a failure, you know, like what we're saying, all of these negative uh, comments to myself, instead of saying, wow, like, look at what is happening. Look at the amazing things that are happening for me. And maybe this, this time that I need to rest, like I was actually upset that I couldn't, I didn't do a podcast last week, you know, I was supposed to do a new moon meditation. I didn't do that either. You know, all of these things were running through my mind these past few days. And I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll just really like, just put something out so everyone can come in, you know, but I was like, well, you know what? I need some time to rest. I'm really exhausted. And I had to take that time of self-care and just say, okay, like, wait a minute, I need to slow down. And, you know, I, uh, I, I needed to just experience everything in the present. And, you know, in retrospect, I could have done things differently, but this is what is right now. And just allowing that to be and just allowing myself to breathe and knowing that everything is going to be okay. You know, because there's that sense of like, I didn't do this, I didn't do this responsibility, so therefore I'm not worthy. Um, so when we're going back into that pattern of unworthiness, then we start to get anxious and stressed. And you know, those are that those are my patterns. But when I just took a breath and I said, okay, I need to take care of myself. And if I don't show up well for myself, it's not, um, you know, then when I show up for my clients, it's going to be kind of, it's going to be kind of rushed, you know, it's not going to feel good, you know, it's not going to feel loving. So if I am loving to myself, even if, I, even if it's the timings were not what I had expected to do, it's still going to be uh, beautiful, you know, and then it's just a mindset shift, which is really important, you know, it, that just is a, is that actually the most important phase of this? Um, even for, you know, even as I was reading his book, um, this book about Ramana Maharshi, you know, it's like that mindset shift. He was like, okay, this is, you know, he was, there was a scene in the, in the story because he was still young and he didn't, wasn't doing his schoolwork well anymore. And he was still living with his parents, you know, because I don't know, he was like, I don't say exactly his age, but I think he was like uh, 15 or something like that. And so um, he was supposed to like redo his homework three times. And so he started to do it. And he did two times and he was just like, what am I doing this for? I'm not doing this, you know? And then his father got mad and he's like, if you're not going to do it, you know, you should just leave the house. And that's what actually sparked him to be like, okay, yeah, I'm going to leave. Um, and so it's just this like shift of like, I don't have to do this anymore. I don't have to be a part of this cycle anymore. Um, even when he decided to completely leave and he let go of all his, all of his possessions, he was of a higher caste. Um, so he took off his, um, usually the, the boys, they wear this kind of thread to show that they're of this specific, specific caste in India. And so he took that off too. Like he's no longer part of that structure anymore. He's no longer part of the caste structure. 
Um, so all of that is very important. You know, when we make, it seems like a simple decision, but it's a very important decision. So just making the decision that I'm going to care for myself, I'm going to give to myself first before I um, give to another is super important. And that is part of service, I feel, because I feel that when we're, because we're not just serving ourselves, we're serving God, because we are, um, we're conduits of God. And the more that we realize that, and we realize that we're not controlling anything, you know, we're just are. And as we are, you know, receiving downloads, as we are receiving intuitive messages and following them, we are helping ourselves and the planet and each other to heal. This is the bigger message I'm, try I'm going for. And I have been all the time, but I feel like the focus now is on ourselves and our, on our inner balance, which is, which is what makes sense as well for me because I couldn't get it together, right? I just like, it just wasn't happening. Um, and I was just like, it's okay because that's what I need to do right now. And that's the message that I'm sharing today is that the more that we focus on ourselves and our own peace and our own balance, things just flow. And when we can move into that flow, whatever that is for each of us, then we can create more of that momentum of, um, of receiving what we are desiring and even just receiving, you know, it doesn't have to even, you may feel empty. Like I don't have anything that I really desire. I just want to, I just am, you know? And so great. If you're in that place, like just be and just flow. Um, or there may be things that you're desiring and you don't know how to get to them. So that's also fine. You know, just as you continue to be at peace with yourself, you're going to see that opportunities of those things are just going to come to you. But I feel like the number one um, message today is about alignment, aligning your chakras, balancing your energies, feeling at one with yourself, connecting to the earth, you know, all of these things, which is all a very personal journey, actually helps the planet. You know, this small microcosm is actually part of the bigger micro macrocosm, the tapestry of the healing of the earth and the healing of each other. This is part of the great awakening. Because as I may have said last time, you know, we are now, or I'm I'm saying this time, we're now stepping into the new earth. This is the movement that's happening with this new moon. As we become balanced with ourselves, we are starting to create the fertile ground to live in this new earth, which is um which is just abundance, you know, just, it's just love, um, on the highest, in the highest and highest of vibrations. And so what we're asked to do is to cleanse our energy, to continue to, um, to raise our vibrations and wherever we are on that journey. So, you know, wherever I am or wherever you are, everything is, is perfect. You know, like we are, we are all on our own personal journeys to release to, to reach this higher aspect of um, liberation, sadhana, moksha, nirvana, whatever word that you feel makes sense to you, that's where we're going. And we're not going the way that people used to go. So like, you know, I was thinking of Ramana Maharshi, you know, like this is something of my own ancestry. And I was like, wow, you know, like, is that the way I need to go? Like to release all of my worldly pursuits and to just be like this um ascetic you know but that doesn't make sense to me that for me doesn't is not um is not my desire i feel that like and and this makes sense also for balance i feel personally that um to really be connected is to connect to the body and connect to the desire of the earth into that divinity you know that's the kundalini awakening for me it's like opening up the body to connect into the divine where everything is actually in homage to all that is you know it's just this energetic shift you know i can be in partnership i can ha be a mom and have children i could be of this material world and still be connected into the spiritual world there doesn't have to be a separation um it's more of this connectedness to um you know 
to an energetic flow that then allows others to connect to that. Because I feel like on mass, you know, like let's say we were all ascetics and we decided to go into the mountain. Let's say a, a part of us decided to do that. Okay, fantastic. But what about, you know, the population that needs to learn from us? And I'm not saying that we are separate, like we're all equal, you know, so the collective is desiring that, but how does everything still work and function? You know, then we're sitting in two different worlds where I, there, there's still that aspect of duality. So when we can connect into oneness, and he does talk about this. He talks about the oneness with God. So I'm as well speaking of this, the oneness with God and the oneness with ourselves and the oneness with each other, where we can still operate in this world without this any belligerence, without any kind of feelings of separateness. You know, we may or may not um resonate with other people but that's still okay because they are people we are people we're all living beings and we're accepting all that is you know and you may need to go off on your own but you know still be of the world you know so i i feel like it is it is kind of a fine line but this is the newness of this kind of awakening where we're not, you know, we may go off into groups and be with our soul tribe and things like that, yet we're still connected connected to the world. We're connected to abundance. We're connected to all that is, you know, we can, we can even give up our worldly possessions. Yet if we're desiring more to give to ourselves and the world, like we just, we can have worldly pleasures. You know, we can experience that. And I feel like um, at least part of my journey was allowing myself, giving myself permission to have that as well. Because part of, you know, I said my tradition is to be like, oh yeah, there, you know, as a spiritual person, you don't need anything, which is in some effects true because everything just comes to you. You don't have to work hard. You have to just allow and receive and let it happen and do, um, you know, inspired action. So I just wanted to share that with you today because, you know, there's still all of these sages that are, that are very much a part of our lives and very much a part of our, our, um, our spiritual advancement. And I, I believe like he, Ramana Maharshi is speaking to me like as Osho, you know, like they are part of my spirit guides, um, sharing with me ways, though I also feel that the difference is um, the way that I connect to that and the way that I, um, process that is different from their times because we are all living in different environmental times and different historical times. So even though the truth exists, there is that oneness always, that is the thread that exists in all, um, generations. Yet the way that it, um, comes out or the way that it is being expressed is going to be different. And so I feel like that is the biggest difference in this own personal journey that can happen at any age, you know, like my children who are younger, um, they are experiencing epiphanies and sharing them with me, you know, and, and just to live, at least for me, to, for them to live in a very open household without, uh, you know, rules that, that um, oppress them is super important and to have, for them to have the appropriate boundaries to keep them safe and um and to you know fortify that and to encourage them to create their own boundaries and their own desires is super important to me as well so it doesn't matter what age you are it doesn't matter um where you're living you know what matters is that you are true to yourself that you're authentic to yourself and you're allowing yourself to truly live the life that you're desiring and um and not putting yourself in a box, you know, because I feel like balancing means you get to be whoever you want to be, you know, like I get to be a spiritual entrepreneur, I get to be a mom, I get to be a loving partner, I get to be loving to myself, I get to um, uh, put on that financial hat, you know, like I get to do all of those things and know that I can and get the help that I need as well. I'm not also saying that we're just, 
alone in our pursuits. We are sovereign beings and we are interdependent with each other. So if you've been following me these past few weeks, you know, these are some of the things that I've been discussing and I'm, I'm just like, this is the coalescing of all of those um, ideas that we're, we're getting, we're moving into balance with ourselves and into balance with the earth. And it may take time, you know, also to have patience with ourselves. You know, uh, these things are not, may or may not be um, fast or they may be, you know, it's like it, uh, it really depends. But I feel like the more that we can allow ourselves to uh, truly become balanced and stay in that balance and not go into those um, mental stories that stop us, you know, that is a super important part of our journey. Um, and those of you that are, are interested in some of the things that I'm doing, I will have a Newman meditation in October. I, I am already planning that, so that is definitely happening. And that'll be live in the Zoom. Um, and that is, um, that's through uh, a link that um, you'll access when you um, join. And then there is the full moon activation. Uh, we are working on whether that's happening or not. Um, and uh, I will update you because the full moon is, I believe, on the 22nd of September. And so that is going to be pre recorded and you can download that. As well, I just want to give you some of my other offerings. I'm starting a tech therapy. Um, so any of you who have, are challenged in technology and would like some assistance of doing a group course, it's about four sessions and um, two individual sessions as well, excuse me, for $333. That starts at the end of September. I have two groups um, and I am doing individual quantum healing sessions as well as my uh, group and personal mentoring. So lots going on this month and, and, and the ongoing months. And, um, and I just want to really be there for you. So those of you who are not sure of anything and want to just have a chat, I do have free 15-minute chats where we can connect because I, I really do realize, especially people who are um, connected in abusive situations and are looking to move out of them or have been or have left them and are really looking to go into their spiritual purpose, um, I'm here for you. I know how challenging that can be to change our mindsets, to change our habits, to change our thoughts, um, to believe that we're worthy, to change patterns when we're, you know, moving into new relationships with a, a romantic partner, even with our children. Um, how do we really feel worthy? How do we allow ourselves to really um, receive this beautiful divine love? Uh, it's something I've been working on for the past few years. And just like allowing the divine to work through you, surrendering all attachments and allowing yourself to hold the vision of your highest journey. And it has been challenging for me, and yet having this kind of grounding, balancing um, practice of believing that I can have everything and as I ground and I meditate and I connect, continue to connect uh, both my energies both into Mother Earth and Father Sky, you know, really allowing God to work through me. It has been of the utmost um, of the, you know, it has been, it has really been serving me. And I feel like when we serve ourselves, we're, we are um, allowing ourselves to serve others. So that's an important point I wanted to share, which is, um, you know, basically the thread of this entire podcast is serving yourself serves others. And that does not mean you're selfish. It means that you are caring for your vessel, you're caring for your connection to the divine, you're caring for your connection to yourself, and you're realizing that you can have everything you desire when you really connect inward. Because um, as I have said earlier in various other podcasts, you know, the, the kingdom of heaven is within. So when we connect to that universal wisdom that we have into that oneness of all that is, you know, we we do have epiphanies, we do have realizations, and part of that process is the resistance of like, can we live this different life, you know, after so many years? And, and it doesn't matter what age you are, you could be 17, you could be 35, you could be 50, you could be 60, it really doesn't matter how old you are. We still have habits and ways of thinking, 
that self-sabotage ourselves. So when we can really connect into that feeling of safety, as I said in the beginning, the feeling of love, um, loving ourselves and of, of the higher powers loving us, the universe loving us, people really desiring to love us and really giving first and foremost to ourselves because we every relationship are, we have uh, begins with ourselves. So as we connect into that loving kindness of all that is um, and the safety in our root chakra, we allow ourselves to be safe with another and allow ourselves to be safe in our own bodies. Um, this is really the the biggest thing about trauma is that we don't feel safe. We feel like our minds are, you know, are not not telling us the truth. Our hearts are not telling us the truth. Um, and it's that idea of actually trusting, trusting ourselves, trusting God, trusting our path. You know, I used to always go to readers and to help me when I've had challenges or fear about something not manifesting. And I realized, you know, every time I would go, like, and I would listen, like, I already knew that. And, um, and it was just this matter of trusting, trusting and being patient with what is and allowing myself to let go of the anxiety of, like, it's not happening. I'm going to get disappointed again. I'm going to get heartbroken. That actually is never true. Um, when we allow ourselves to just flow with what is and focus on the most beautiful dream possible, and it may even be fantastic, you're going to see that you are going to get every bit of that and more. And that comes with balance within. That comes with the idea of safety and love always within yourself and with God. That is the first and foremost relationship. Everything else comes after. So I hope that this resonated with you. Um, thank you, thank you. Those of you who've been following me, who've been listening, who've been enjoying the interviews, I will be continuing that as well. If you have any questions about the new moon uh, meditation in October or the full moon meditation at the end of this month or the tech therapy, quantum healing, any of my programs, please go to my website gilanhemi.com. You could schedule a 15-minute chat with me there as well or sign up for my newsletter. Um, I, I would love to hear from you. I'd love to have your feedback on anything that I'm sharing. Um, I'd love to hear about your journeys and how we can work together to heal each other and the planet. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Those of you who are listening, Shana Tova, Vagamar Hatima Tova, those of you who are... Um, observing Rosh Hashanah and the upcoming Yom Kippur and um, happy, happy new year, happy, happy day for any of you that are listening. I just wanted to send my blessings and love to each and every one of you of abundance, of love, of joy, of um, eternal happiness and connecting to yourself and to God and to all that is. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Namaste, Om Shanti, Shalom.